So in today's video, we're going to be discussing of how I built the ultimate video editing workstation in 2022. So when it comes to my PC that I'm currently working with, it is the Intel Core i7 8700K. It has about 48 gigs of RAM and an NVIDIA RTX 2060 Founders Edition. And overall, when it came to my current PC, it has been a really, really good video editing workstation for pretty much the past five to six years, which is really solid and has never really failed on me uh, throughout the time, and especially when I was using cameras like the Sony 6000 and the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. Um, again, it handled the footage like butter. However, it all changed, especially when I got my hands on the Canon EOS R5 back in 2020, which again, this camera is amazing, but it is a pain in the butt to work with, especially in post-production, and especially when I need to go into the proxy workflow and pretty much just transcode all my footage, so that way it's easier in post. However, the more I got into that proxy workflow, the more time it took, especially in my video editing process, and I felt like now more than ever is honestly kind of the perfect time for me to upgrade my video editing workstation. And since I was planning to upgrade my video editing workstation, I decided why not make a video about it. So guys, currently in my hands, this is the new Intel Core i9-12900K. It is a hybrid processor with 16 cores, it has 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. And guys, there is a very specific reason of why I truly do recommend going with this processor, especially when it comes to video editing, um, is that if you're gonna be working with cameras like the Canon R5, the Sony a7S III, the FX3, the Canon C70, the Sony FX6, a lot of these cameras and a lot of new cameras that are coming out in the future are working with a codec that is known as 10 bit 4 2 which I did mention earlier in this video. Now specifically when it comes to 10 bit 4 2 it is kind of a tricky subject just because especially when it comes in the hardware space, there's not a whole lot of hardware that can actually generally support this codec because even if you were to go on NVIDIA's website, uh, they specifically say that they can handle uh, codecs like 10 bit 420 and 10 bit 444, but even in an asterisk, they say that it doesn't support 10 bit 422, which is kind of strange because a lot of these camera companies are pushing 10 bit 422, but that comes with Intel. So pretty much I have done a lot of research and figured out that really the only two manufacturers that make hardware that can actually decode and encode uh, 10 bit 422 is Intel's 11th gen processor or higher that also includes 12th generation or Apple's silicon with their M1, their M1 Pro and their M1 Max. So pretty much from Intel and Apple, they are really the only two companies right now that can actually handle 10 bit 422. And that is why I went with the Intel 12th gen processor. And so besides the processor and getting into the rest of the specs of this PC, we have G-Skills Trident Z Royal Series for the RAM. And pretty much within here, we have 128 gigs of DDR4. Now it is true with the new launch of 12th gen coming out, uh, now DDR5 is available to purchase. Now personally, when it comes to DDR5, I just feel like it's not really worth it right now, especially the fact that we don't really need those faster speeds. And also just to look at the price of it in general, like the fact that you can get pretty much 128 gigs of DDR4 for like the same price as like a 64 gig module kind of just tells you like where the pricing is. So again, when it came to building my new PC, obviously I want it to be really, really good in performance, but also I want it to be a bit practical. So that way it's not gonna cost me like a crazy amount of money. Now next up comes the SSD. For me, I went with the crucial two terabyte PCIe Gen 3 SSD. So obviously for those who know, PCIe Gen 4 is the latest and greatest, but I personally felt that Gen 3 is honestly more than fast enough for what we need. Uh, in pretty much PCs nowadays. Now guys, next up is the motherboard. And as I did say that we are going with DDR4 memory, which means we are going with a DDR4 motherboard. So right here we have ASUS's Rogue Strix. This is the Z690A gaming Wi-Fi uh, D4 motherboard. And yeah, overall, just a really solid motherboard. And of course, since we are going with a white build, I think this is gonna look really, really good. Now to match up with the motherboard, we have the ASUS Rogue Strix. This is the 850 watt power supply in the white edition. Obviously, as I did say, we are building a white PC. So we are continuing with a white power supply. Next up is our CPU cooler. We have the Lian Li Galahad it is the AIO 240. Now guys, when it came to picking a case for this PC build, honestly, I did a lot of scouring to try and find one of the best white cases I can get for my PC build. And I have kind of gotten my hands on a lot of white PC cases, but a lot of them just didn't really fit my needs of what I was looking for. So this right here, we have the Corsair Crystal Series. This is the 680X. Um, and RGB, and it is a white edition case. I'm pretty sure you guys are tired of me talking about these PC components, so let's get into the part where we are actually building the PC, so let's get into that. All right guys, so right here we are with our new build. So pretty much with the case, I've already installed the motherboard, 
and uh, pretty much did some of the wiring and also installed some new fans. So obviously, as you guys may know, with the GPU market, it is extremely hard to get anything. And the one graphic card that I'm really looking at right now is the RTX 3090, um, purely just because of its VRAM. And I know most people are pr pretty much just saying, dude, why do you need a 3090? It's super overkill. The biggest reason of why I'm looking at the 3090 is because of the amount of video memory that it has. So especially when you're working with 8K and 12K, um, even in DaVinci Resolve, if you're playing it back, there's literally a pop-up that will tell you like, hey, we recommend you to get a GPU with at least 24 gigs of VRAM. So pretty much they're just telling you that, hey, you gotta get yourself the RTX 3090. Um, and obviously there is a Titan RTX and all of those, but those are like, you know, two, uh, $2,500 and above. So obviously those cards are pretty expensive, but I feel like the RTX 3090 is kind of one of those cards where it's not crazy expensive, but obviously you kind of want to work some stuff out. I decided to drive one hour away to a Best Buy and actually was able to get myself an RTX 3090. This is the Gigabyte version. So it does say it is a gaming version of the 3090, but nonetheless, we do have a 3090 in our hands. And besides that, I think we are finally done going over the parts. So I think now it's just time to get all these things inside the PC, get it going. And uh, yeah, again, as I said, super, super excited to finally upgrade my PC in over like five to six years. So let's get into the build process. And guys, here is the finished build. We have the GeForce RTX 3090. We got all the cables connected. Guys, honestly, I think this looks really, really good. I can't wait for you guys to see when this thing is powered on. All right, guys, so I know that the lighting is like terrible right now. I'm using the front facing camera for the iPhone. But pretty much, I, so far I just plugged in the, the power and all the peripherals into the PC. So, so far we got the motherboard lighting up. That is a good sign. Oh guys, oh my god, I am so, so nervous. I'm just, I'm hoping that everything goes through. The thing is, is that I did save um, a BIOS update on my flash drive because I know a lot of these new uh, Z690 boards, when the manufacturer is shipping them out, uh, they're not actually shipping it out with the with the firmware that you necessarily need it to be. But guys, we are about to press the power button. I am so, so excited. All right, three, two, one. Oh my God. All right guys, so it has been a couple of weeks ever since I finished building my new PC with the Intel Core i9-12900K, 120 gigs of RAM, and of course the RTX 3090. And I gotta say that this thing has been an absolute powerhouse. Like literally, I have dealt with zero issues when it comes to video editing or gaming, or honestly anything that I've thrown at this machine, it just handles it really, really well. But pretty much right now, I kinda wanna showcase to you guys that especially the title of this video, when it comes to 8K and 12K video, that this thing can pretty much handle anything that you throw at it. So the two video editing softwares that we're gonna be working with today is Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, we're gonna use that first because that is generally my typical video editing software that I work with most of the time. But also I do have DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. Um, and especially with Resolve 17, it does handle uh, a lot of the codecs a lot better compared to Premiere. So let's first start off with Premiere Pro since I already do have a project opened up. So obviously the project that I have opened up is the video that I'm working on right now. Um, and again, like literally, even like when we're just scrolling back in this thing, um, and even I have OBS turned on to record the screen as well. And with OBS and everything, like this thing, like you can tell, like even just scrolling, it just looks really good. And of course when we play, see yeah and again we're playing this at native resolution so we are playing it back in full 4k res uh, resolution so this is uh 10 bit 422 canon r5 uh 4k right here and you know of course it looks really really good with its colors um even here uh i believe this is actually so this clip right here is prores because we use the animus ninja 5 um so this is uh animus ninja 5's prores and again just plays back super smooth uh no issues whatsoever and um, of course you guys do know that I got the new uh, Panasonic Lumix S5 as my new B camera. So when we come to playback uh, Panasonic footage, um, even when it's graded, um, when it comes to scrolling, it does lag a little bit in Premiere, but it's not terrible when it comes to its lag. But of course, when we hit the play button, like 
literally no issues and again all of this is in native 4k so it just handles it really really well so that's just kind of a showcase just to show how premiere pro handles with uh with tempe 422 especially since i know that's a really uh you know popular codec to work with nowadays in most modern cameras but we're gonna switch over to davinci resolve where we're going to be working with Canon's 12-bit 8K raw uh, footage and also footage from cameras like the RED uh, V-Raptor because I just went and downloaded some sample footage from their website and uh, also do have some sample footage of some Blackmagic Ursa 12K footage. Pretty much right here as our first clip we have Canon R5's 12-bit 8K raw and just to prove to you guys that this is native uh, 8K playback um, let's go into uh, project settings from files and literally within our master settings, you guys can see that our timeline resolution is 8192 by 4320 DCI. So exact same resolution that the R5 is recording in 8K, um, you know, 23.976 for 24 frames per second. And video monitoring, 8K, 4320p, uh, you know, 23.976. So again, literally everything is there. Pretty much, li li literally the highest uh, resolution we can play back anything on DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. And, uh, and first, we're gonna play it back without the color grade, so I'm gonna hit the toggle switch up there. So this is the raw footage from AK. And also, I will pull up the task manager just to kind of prove to you guys of how well this handles. Button. There we go, so it kind of stutters a little bit in the beginning, but once we pass a couple seconds, boom, you guys can see already right there, we do have the green light of 23.976. So it is playing back in, uh, in full, uh, you know, without any stutters, without any hiccups, it's playing back. And of course, with our GPU, with the 3090, you guys can see that it is being utilized 55%. So again, half of the GPU is being utilized for 8K RAW, but as you guys can tell, it handles it really, really well. So now we do have the color enabled, so now you guys can tell that my color grade is on top of the 8K 12-bit video. So now, let's play it back and pull up our task manager, so it stutters a little bit in the beginning. But again, playing back without any uh, buffering, without any stops, again, native 24 frames per second is playing back. Uh, CPU is still roughly around, you know, 80% being utilized, and of course for our GPU, so our GPU is being utilized a little bit more, so instead of 55%, it's 60, so uh, like 5% more, especially when it comes to utilization, but again, no issues in playback, and of course, you guys need to remember, we're playing this at native 8K, like we're not, you know, like there's no proxies involved, there's no uh, 4K playback, it just does it really, really well. And uh, right here, is this color graded or not? Okay, no, I don't think so. But anyways, so our next clip of this grasshopper is a downloaded clip from Red's website. So this is the new Red V Raptors uh, image. And I gotta say, I am a huge fan of uh, the Red color science. I think it looks really, really good in my opinion. And you guys can even tell, even in just scrolling through this Red AK file, like it just plays it back with no issues. And now let's see, okay, so our CPU is about 40, 30 to 40 and then our GPU is about 35. So again, even Blackmagic Ursa 12K footage, you know, playing it back in 8K timeline, no issues whatsoever. It is just, like, it's still so phenomenal to see how these, uh, how these editing software is just handle uh, these codecs very, very well with the hardware that we have implemented. It just looks really, really good at the end of the day. Um, and of course, when we have uh, 10-bit 422, so this again was shot on the Canon R5, some of the B-roll that I did for the S5 versus the 13 Pro Max. Make sure to go check out that video, info card up there. But when we play it back, you guys can see that our iGPU should be the one that's working. And yeah, again, our video decoding for our iGPU is about 70 to 80%. So I kind of just showcased you guys that it is working really, really well. Um, and of course, like even when we look at our GPU, our GPU, it's being utilized a little bit, like 28%, but the main thing at hard work right now is for sure that iGPU. And now I'm not saying that all video editors need to get this PC, cause like, especially if you are someone who's just working with 4K files, you're not really planning to go anything more than that. Or if you're more just a content creator, you're not really like, you know, diving super uh, in deep with 8K or 12K. Of course, you don't need to go all out with this machine. And even my previous machine that I had, with the Intel Core i7 uh, 8th generation processor and, you know, what, 48 gigs of RAM, RTX 2060. Again, it's more than enough for a lot of people. And again, like even six cores is plenty enough for a lot of people and what they need. If you guys remember in the beginning of this video, I did say that I do want to build a PC with really good performance, but of course I want it to be practical in price because it's very easy to overspend when it comes to making your own PC. So obviously you kind of have to keep in mind between both your budget 
and what kind of performance you want out of it. But for me, since I was a bit more careful where I was sourcing my parts from and trying to get the best price possible for a lot of these parts, I was able to save myself like almost seven to eight hundred dollars and get it for about three to thirty three hundred dollars. So definitely by me sourcing out these parts in a more smart and effective way, it does make the uh, it does make the cost a lot cheaper for me and overall just the experience between the price to performance it's just really really good. If you guys enjoyed this video make sure to hit that thumbs up, uh, comment something down below especially if you guys are more interested into this build or if you guys have any questions when it comes to video editing or even gaming and I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace!